For this tutorial, let me paint you guys a bit of a picture. Let's say you're chilling at your desk doing some markups on a boring educational project your architecture firm's working on at the moment when you see one of the partners walking over. And it's not one of the cool designer type partners. It's just think of Brian Cranston's character in How I Met Your Mother. And you get the picture. So he comes over to your desk and he says, look, we have a massing model to do for a client. It's speculative and we need to get it out by this afternoon. You smile and nod and say, not a problem. What did you have in your mind? Knowing full well it would have been sitting on his desk for probably two or three weeks, but he didn't want anybody wasting their time doing actual design and decided to sit on it till the absolute last minute. So he says, oh, it doesn't really matter. They mentioned Twisting Towers, so just have a look at the Twisting Towers of uh, Marilyn Monroe. So you do your due diligence and find an image and go, yep, yeah, we should be able to do something like that. And he says, yep, yeah, I'll give you the rest of the day. Of course, in his mind's eye, using a computer is still something that is done by monkeys and takes all day but you with your secret powers of parametric modeling and computational design you should be able to knock it out in about 10 minutes flat so that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial we're going to knock out a quick twisting tower like this one that's just purely a massing imagine you've got a client who wants to see an output like that or a sketch design uh, or a developer or even a design competition where you've got limited time. All our excellent boss gives us is a site plan or the site boundary to go off and that is officially our Friday. Friday. So having said that, let's get started. <laughs> So to get started, we've got our site boundary as provided by our dickhead boss in Rhino. We know that he is prone to changing his mind a lot, so we're going to make sure that all of this uh, quick tutorial is parametric. So apart from the curve, and we just imported the wrong one, double click your canvas, curve. We're pulling a curve, right click, set one curve, that will be our site boundary. Now that is the maximum site boundary as our client owns, so obviously they're going to want an offset, which we don't know because our senior partner hasn't told us anything, but we're going to assume it's three meters, which extends it out. So we'll just right click on the distance expression editor and we'll go x times minus one. That makes it an internal side boundary. Now, like most towers, we want to maximize our floor on the ground. So we're not going to start our twisting tower from the base because that's just silly and a lazy person would do that in their tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude up our initial floor print, floor plan, footprint is the word I'm looking for, whatever, it's late, but it's not, it's Friday morning, I haven't finished my coffee and my boss is an absolute dickhead. I'm going to say that that's six meters tall, up the Z axis, what we're going to do is we're going to call that, make a group. Right click on the group and right ground. Just in case we need to change that at a later date or someone else, we know what it is. We're going to cap those holes just so it looks nice and neat. Uh, hide that. Now for the base of our twisting towel, we want it to be somewhere on this level. So we're going to do something a bit smart 
We're going to explode our B rep. The surface deconstruct B rep. Same, same. I'm gonna hide. Uh, I'm gonna hide that because we don't need it. Grab a list item tool. List. list item. Take our faces into the list item. We know that it's got. Well, how many faces has it got? We can hover over this, it's seven faces. So zero to six, number slider. Stick that in our integer input. Number one. Can hide that, don't need to see that. Okay, what we want is we want to find a point on that surface. So underneath surface analysis, we're going to quickly grab evaluate surface, put this surface in. And for our UV under input, we'll quickly grab our MD slider and that's not quite right. What we want to do is we'll reparameterize our thing so then that's in the center. And we will say yeah, somewhere around there. But when the partner inevitably comes over and says, oh, can we shift it a little bit? We can easily grab our point, shift it at the west, move it to the east, south, north, or when we get further in the project, should it go ahead, we can put some parameters behind that to put it somewhere smarter on the site. But for this, that will do. We can change it if we need to, to please the whims of our all powerful overlords. All right, so let's start our power now that we've our tower now that we've got that point. We're going to grab uh, it's going to be elliptical, grab curve, primitive, ellipse. Use that point. So twelve meters. We'll do make it quite an extreme ellipse for the for this uh, example. Click, hold down Alt and drag, and then we'll make this a uh, nickel. Might just come off our move across. It should be close enough to in our boundary. Yeah, it should easily fit in there. So that gives us our ellipse. Okay. A normal tutorial showing something like this will just do a series of numbers up, say, three or four meters, and then twist the ellipse. But we know our boss will not be happy with that because anybody worth their weight knows that towers are made up of uh, floors with different purposes. So for this tutorial, we're going to set up several uh, floor types. So we're going to go 0 to, say, 50, number slider. We're going to name that number. We're going to select a new one. Then we're going to go 1 to, say, 10. We're going to right-click on that name, and we're going to recall that one floor height. Now, we can easily... Grab uh, duplicate data, set, sequence, duplicate data, duplicate it once, number. So say our floor height is, say we've got a, a function center. We want it to be a bit taller, say seven meters. Add that to a group, call that function. And let's just give it a different color. All right, now we can copy and paste that. We'll call this, then we have commercial, so offices and commercial space. Copy and paste again, right click on the group and then we can rename that to residential. For apartments, copy and paste again. 
And finally, we'll have a penthouse. Change the color of this one to whatever. Doesn't really matter, but makes it clearer to read when we need to come back to it. Color of this one, nice blue. Color of this one, let's go for a yeah, pinky here will do. So now we've got, well, we're going to have one function, which is going to be the ground commercial. So I have, well, seven's a bit many, probably five floors, residential, a lot of them, so 21 for now, penthouse, just one for the time being. Now, what we want, we want to add in a panel, we'll just have it as the number zero. And what that is, that's just our start height, which we're going to use now. So now we've got, got our ground, which is our rectangular square, sort of just the ground floor plane. We've got the function center, commercial, five levels of commercial, 21 levels of residential, and one penthouse. Let's move them down. Now we want to merge these data together. So under set, tree, merge. We'll take our zero, because we want to start at zero. And take our function, add in our commercial floors, our residential floors, and finally our penthouse. Gonna flatten that data so it creates a flat list. And now we want to move our ellipse up at those heights. If we do that, we've got a vector, vector unit Z. If we just move it up, you'll see why we can't just move it up directly. Go click move. Don't have all day. That's our translation vector and our ellipse is our geometry. You see it moves one. Now we haven't changed our heights. So if we change commercial one, you need to be, we'll make that five, make that four, and our penthouse guys are really rich, so they get 10. You see, it's only moving them up. There's one at 10, which is that one, 21 at four, which is there, five at five, and one at seven. So how we get around that without messing around too much, we simply go under maths, addition, maths addition, put that in, and here we've got our partial results, which adds them as they go. We put that in, that gives us our setup as a building should be with all our floors. Oh, that looks a bit ugly, we might just Ugh. Yeah, twisting towers are always boring and ugly. Anyway. So what we're going to do now, now we've got our floor plates, we want to rotate them. So firstly, we want to find the area. Just double click area. Click our geometry into the geometry. That will give us our center point. And we're going to simply rotate our geometry, double click your canvas, type in rotate, and you want the rotate in a plane. And our plane will be our center point of each one. And the geometry is our ellipse. They've all been moved. You can see they've all been rotated. You can hide both of them now. You can hide all of this now as well, just to keep us moving at a good pace. And now we want to set up our rotation, which will be our angle input. So to set up our angles, we're going to create a series of numbers. So double click your canvas, grab a series component, and double click again and put in rad for radians. That'll be our number. Then we'll stick that into our angle. So at the moment it's just one at 90. And for the series, we're going to start at zero. Our step size, we want to be five. We can change, obviously. As we're striving for this to be a 
fully parametric design, you can see that the bottom is twisting and then it stops. That's because our count is only 10. So only the bottom 10 are rotating. We're going to not want that, but we want to do it parametrically in case the boss comes back and says, oh, they want to add or subtract floors and we don't want our design to get broken. So we're going to go set list, grab our list length component. I'm going to grab our original merge data. I'm going to use that as a count and then all pieces get the rotation which is exactly what we want. Okay now we're going to start working on our extrusions. So we want for this I guess we want slabs, uh, balustrades and glazing and that's enough to do a quick V-Ray render. So let's start with the slabs. Again, we're going to want to extrude. Going to extrude our ellipse in the Z direction. So we're going to Z vector. That's going positively in a factor of one. That's a from the scale we've been using, that's a thickness of one meter, which is of course is not what we want. So we're going to put in a point two for our slab thickness, but we don't want it to be positive. We want the slab to go down. We're going to quickly brush and edit on the factor input. We're just going to say X times negative one, just to turn that into a negative. And that will be useful later if we have to change anything. We know that the slab's always going to move down. Now, what we've got is that is the floor of our penthouse. So we don't really need that, otherwise we're going to end up with a large slab on top where the roof will actually be, and that won't be a slab, which we'll worry about later. This is obviously only speculative work, so what we're going to do is we're going to go under set, sequence, color index, and put in our index, and reverse the input and reverse the output. We're simply going to set our integer at zero so that the first one in that list will actually be the top. Because we've reversed our list. If we don't reverse the list, then it's the bottom. It's the first one down there, but we're reversing our list so we don't waste our time with that. Just to keep our grasshopper nice and clean, which is what we want. We're going to cap these. Done. Hide all this. Yeah, we can turn off our. So there's our slabs. Beautiful. Looking a bit short, so let's put in some more residential. And it's all parametric, so that all continues on the curve. Lovely. Of course, you can put a bit of fancy maths in your curve but our boss has given us mere hours to get this all out. So that's our slabs. So we'll put them in another group, right click on the group and call them slabs. So we don't forget, change the color, whatever. Okay, now our balustrades are gonna be a bit trickier. We'll tackle them next. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scale Uniformly, we're going to grab our rotated ellipses and we're going to grab a number slider 0, 0 0.0 to 1. Put that in our factor. Uh, we need our center, which we'll use the center we've already generated. And what have we done? Ah, of course, it's 0. That's the problem. All right, so we want this just to be real small, just in for water and uh, installation purposes. And then we can, again, we can copy this, select all, press control C and control V. And doing it that way will copy the entire group. We select these, right 
click on our group and add to group and our group becomes nice and organized right click value strides or whatever you call them in your country I'm not going to tell you what to talk, call them that's your business I'm get rid of this expression commit changes delete that and we're just going to put in a new number slider with 1.1 1.1 meters or whatever your building regulations call for. Now, for our, we'll just quickly hide our slabs. For our glazing and balustrades, which we assume are going to be glazing or whatever material we choose, and for the sake of our render, we know that we're not going to get a nice curve. We can get away with it on the slabs because concrete a bit easier to do with form work. For this, we're just going to divide our curve. So I'm going to double click and type in divide. Grab our divide curve. And just simply grab our curve, divide it by say 50. And then we're going to want to turn it into a polyline. Right click on closed. Set that boolean to true because we want to close our polyline. We're going to flatten our output. And instead of having the smooth curves output, what we're going to output is our polyline. So that just gives us the effect of, you know, flat plane glass. And actually want that to be closed. That is our balustrade. So we'll delete that. What we're going to do is we'll just them around the other way there we go so that's simulating our glass balustrades we can turn off the preview of that and the preview of this lovely okay next up is our glazing so for that we'll just quickly change the color of this the sake of my sanity, I believe we'll do. Select it all, copy, control V to paste. Okay, so obviously the glazing, we want a bit more walk room in between our walking between our balustrade and our apartment window, so we're just going to bring this down. I'll do. Now, as we're trying to make this as parametric as possible, that's going to include our wall height. So, what we want to do is for our glazing of our apartments and uh, structure, we've got all the heights listed as defined at the very start of the script. So what we can do is we can use these, but of course we don't want the zero point. So we don't know if we've got zero going into our merge data to move up, but we want to ignore that because we want to extrude this point, the glazing, not 1.1, but the seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to use another cull index. We're going to grab our floor height data that we've set up. We're going to right click on our input, set integer to zero. And that clears that zero out. So now we should start at seven. Perfect. Now with that, we want to extrude every floor glazing up. 
but we don't want to go into our slabs. So what we're going to do, we're going to go under math operators subtraction. Just quickly going to subtract. Point two from our seven and other numbers, and that's going to give us six point eight, four point eight, etc. So that way we're not going into our slab, which will mess up any other work we want to do. Because if this project goes ahead, of course we want everything to be set up as smart as possible. Or if we want to take it even further, we want to be able to make sure we know what's been done and we can work from there without having to recreate the wheel, which is just a smart architecture. So there is our internal glazing. And there's our penthouse. We can do a roof later. We can put our slabs back on. We can, we can cap our glazing. That'll give us our area where we can put in our roof at a later date. And we can also just we'll put on the preview. And just as we click on put on the preview, our argumentative asshole senior partner in the firm walks past our desk and can't believe the amount of work we've managed to do in about 10 minutes because they never took the time to learn computational design or parametric design. And from this, we can start doing our floor plans. We can do a quick V-Ray render, or we can even start outputting Excel data to the developer or competition that uh, explains our floor layout, the uh, efficiency of our floor plans, and just start selling our design, which is the whole point. So I hope you guys found that a little bit helpful. Um, I'd like to start doing a few more quick grasshopper tutorials about how it's effective in a studio environment. Um, if you guys like this, give it a thumbs up. If you guys didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And uh, if you really, really liked it, uh, why not hit the subscribe button? Either way, go and get another coffee and continue with your day, guys. Peace.